Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. And I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics and Fantastic Four Grand Design. We're going to look at X-Men number one by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, uh, a recolored edition from X-Men Grand Design by Ed Piscor. Before we crack this open, I want to invite all of you to like, follow, and subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button. That'll notify you when we post a new video. It'll give you a leg up on the kayfabe effect. Kayfabe effect, when we showcase a book, sometimes everybody tries to get a copy of that book. If it's out of print, uh, it can disappear quick. It can go up in price. So you want to be the first ones on the hunt for that. And that is why you want to hit the notification button so you can be first in line. Also, let these videos play through to the end of the video. That allows YouTube's algorithm to share our videos with other comics fans that haven't found Cartoonist Kayfabe yet. It's how we grow this channel. It's how we've gotten 60 plus thousand subscribers on our quest for 6 million. So thank you for your help on that. Keep spreading the Cartoonist Kayfabe good word, and we will keep talking about some of the best comics in history, like X-Men number one. Yeah, man. This was a pleasure. Like, mm -hmm. I, I did the recolor job. Uh, you know, we talk about it often, but it's like, rather than just bitch and complain about the stuff that we dislike or think can be adjusted in comics, like, do something about it. And uh, reprint colors are always stuff that comes up in conversations between us and other cartoonists and certainly people in the comments. They spot the, the stuff also, right? Like, you hate the pristine white paper and the super saturated, ridiculous color. So... Got my chance to make my X-Men comic. Uh, I could reprint whatever I wanted in there. Logical sense to reprint um, X-Men issue one by Stan and Jack. And uh, being able to study that artwork at such a close mm -hmm. level, I swear to God I became a better artist by being able to look at this stuff super magnified on a giant monitor. Yeah, absolutely. Ed, were you looking at the original color palette as you were going through to recolor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but I was making my own decisions also. Mm -hmm. Man, it looks great to start with. And, uh, you know, issue one's always fun to look at and kind of cool to see, like, what hits, what doesn't, what do they land with? And I feel like one of the hits right away, I love these original costumes. Yeah, me too. Yeah, super good. And they became iconic, man. Yeah. There's, like, some Adult Swim cartoon. I forget what it's called. But, but like, the villains have this, this outfit. Um, but when you really start to get into it, you see that uh, we had some hit with Fantastic Four. So let's have... Fantastic Five. So you have <laughs> so you have all your Urzats stand-ins. You have Yeah, we you, had a fire guy in the other one. So here's the ice guy. You had a blonde in, in the OG, so let's have a redhead. Uh the big heavy. Because that is how Beast is portrayed. He's just the thing mm -hmm. with big hands and feet, you know, a, a tough guy. It's about issue three or four. We're just all of a sudden on a dime, the characters changed on the mm -hmm. splash page. Uh, your Reed Richards, uh, you know, is immobile. This is a really nice reprint. Like, the line fidelity is really impressive. Inks by Paul Reinman is not an inker that I think of or or know other credits of even mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to Kirby. And I'll point out some stuff as we go along because I think his inking's pretty different than most of the Kirby inkers. But first of all, love these two panels. Yeah, so good. You know, like, for, for Kirby layouts, like, very cool intro for... Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me call Professor attention. X. Let me call attention to this image too. This is Jack Kirby piece, man, that was done for the uh, Marvel T-shirts back in like the mid late '60s, and and this is one of my favorite Jack Kirby X Men illustrations in existence. I actually didn't know what the illustration was for when, uh, but I but I I saw it all the time, you know, and I hit Marvel up like. Like, I want this to go on my inside cover. Mm -hmm. Like, like what is it? Where was it from? Blah, blah, blah. But if I had to guess, I would say that that's Chick Stone inking because of that super thick line. And, mm -hmm. and almost like the... that To me, that's the that's the tandem that, like, uh, Bruce Timm mm -hmm. sort of hangs his hat on when he does his, his Kirby. Really like the Marvel girl there. I like how her, like, the black costume part bleeds into Absolutely, the black Absolutely, man. Really so cool. good. Yeah. So good. Kind of a funny uh, opener for this issue where it is just like expositional Moss. intro of these characters and their powers. Um, well, I mean, we've talked about like first issues and origins and things like that. Uh, these Jack Kirby first issues of like this Marvel stuff, they're not origins. Like, and, and that's a good thing. It's like we're throwing you kind of right into it. You're, the characters are fully formed. You'll get the intro later, you know, uh, the origin later. And, um, so much of like the X-Men 
mythology is sort of set up here too because it's like they don't call it the danger room right. yet that comes later but the idea of like it's a school you're gonna do demos of your power i'm gonna put you through your paces you're gonna you know run obstacle courses tests, and tests, tests yeah of your and, and, and he's sitting there in the chair evaluating your 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 performance yeah it's, it's uh that's a really good summary of these first several pages and a good showcase you know if you're playing along like who these characters are in a weird way this feels like the uh, toy, cartoon kind of like presentation mm-hmm. of this stuff. You know, like pretty quickly you can get on board with which of these characters do you like, and it's based on their powers. You know, who who, who do you who's your favorite powers? Really? And and, it, and it's a it's a new twist on superheroes, like like Spider Man was and stuff. It's like we are superheroes in training. We are kids learning to be superheroes at the school. So you got the school stuff, and then it's like now we're doing a field trip where you go out and you know, test your skills in like a real combat situation. The, Iceman's amazing looking in I, this iteration. Like that is wild stuff. I'm a fan of the snowman Iceman. Like, like doing grand design, that was one of the things where I'm like, oh man, I got to do the, I got to like make that guy cool. Because a lot of people like, like they, they dislike mm-hmm. the slushy. They like the silver surfer Iceman. Right. There was a really cool, like when I first saw Will's Portatio, he was doing X Factor and he would do this Iceman that was like, like, the powers of the ice that were coming off of his hands looked like these energy bursts. It was very wild stuff, but he kind of made a, a cool ice man at that time. Yeah. Now there's all these like amazing Kirby gadgets and things like the sort of thing, like um, Mr. Miracle would have to escape from or whatever. But then when you throw something as mundane as a bowling ball into it, it's it, great. It, it, it adds like a level of like danger. Like I'm more scared of this yes. hitting ice man than I am of any of this stuff. You know, it's so good too. There's even like the little bowling bag there, <laughs> but his hat flying off as he's like getting, responding to this coming uh, threat. It's good. It's a good sequence. I, I have experience with this man. Like there was a, it was a new year's Eve sort of like before age 21, we can't go to the bar and stuff. Me and some friends with the bowling alley and we were in the middle of an argument. So on both sides of us, they were these people were arguing over top of us with one another. And then the bowling balls started flying, oh God. smashed a, a Pepsi machine, smoke and canine unit like was shot into the fucking building. Uh, the dogs were running amok and uh we got our asses out there super quick, man. Yeah, that's uh, that, that sounds rough. And, and on the way out, we did uh, steal some of the pops that that came out of the bottom of the uh, the, the busted soda machine. Nice, uh, super super tight six panel grids. Yes, mm-hmm. you know, like sometimes you'll see where the panels will be slightly off. Not here. This is just hardcore six panel grids. Super happy to get a little Kirby humor. Like, mm-hmm. like there's not yes. so much of it. It's very funny. For, for the context here. This is fun too, like getting your nine panel grid inserted yeah. in there. And like what a you know beautiful introduction to this. Uh, like maybe one of my favorite things in Marvel or like and, and you know the the Cyclops goggles and something that's been imitated. Like everybody's imitated. You know, Robocop's got them, you know. <laughs> I, but I feel like Dr. Solar came before uh Cyclops. I yeah, that wonder. Could be. I wonder. Well, it's about that time. I, yeah, I mean, I would guess that Cyclops predates him, but yeah, I, that that's just my thought. But um, do you look at this and see um, like Domu or Akira, yeah. like the character <laughs> sure. being pressed against the wall? It's kind of cool to see a different uh, take on that. I always like to see no reflection on the outfit, so that it's like pure black yeah, and yellow. Too. But that could be the Pittsburgh in me talking. You know, I, <laughs> like with with like Mister Fantastic. I could never figure out how do you make Mr. Fantastic cool or whatever. But I think all all it takes is like a visor because he's not, you know, he's kind of the same kind of character. He's kind of like corny and plays uh-huh. by the book, but he's got that cool ass visor. And so he, he's an icon. Yeah. Yeah. When it's Mr. Fantastic, Reed Richards, it's just your dad. Yeah. It's, it's the visor. I always love this panel. Kirby does this a lot, you know, the close-up of the two eyes. It is such a good panel for Professor X. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that's such a great way to, like, kind of show his power. It makes me think of, like, the, uh, like, white zombie Bela Lugosi whenever he's he's uh, hypnotizing somebody and just, you know, pull the string, pull the string. Makes me wonder when he starts using this panel, because I always associate with late, like, in the 70s is when I think about yeah. seeing that a lot. But, I mean, this is early 60s. Yeah. If this is a first use, it'd be great. I don't know when it begins, but yeah. man, is that like a perfect I, use of that I, panel. I guess it's in the 50s. There's probably some like horror story or yeah, romance or something. Sense. This is the era where he's got to draw eight pages a right. day. Yeah. Like you take a flyer or two on the panel. Like it's great, but... And just some great animated sequences here, you know. The way Cyclops he... is a powerhouse, by the way, in this mm-hmm. uh, early intro. The way he builds his... Like 
he's really figured out a great way to build the figures with speed mm -hmm. and 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 just communicate all of his ideas. Seven pages though, and, and we really haven't accomplished much. Yeah. It's almost like what are we gonna do with these guys, Jack? Here we are, man, sowing the seeds for for uh Iceman's sexual preference or orientation, I guess. Is Do you the think word the person that, that that did that was like rereading this stuff and thinking and was like, "Yeah, we could do that. Like, this would <laughs> well, make sense." I, I mean, when ever you have to work on these like old characters, you're kind of like um, looking for fumes. Like you're, you're right. scraping the bottom of the barrel because they've been so dissected. So you're just digging through there, trawling, looking for something you can build on. So I wouldn't doubt that. I mean, d doing like a grand design, I'm sure, you know, you guys can relate to that too of like, you know, what's in this early work that hasn't been explored yet. It's a pretty popular moment too. Um, let me get there. It, it's in the uh, John Byrne. Yeah. Like verbatim, uh, you know, it's a different camera angle, right? But it's verbatim to that panel, which I thought was really cool. It's funny even to think like maybe you're you're working on this concept with Iceman or whatever, and it comes out of like a panel like this, like the revised right. version where it's just a girl, big deal. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, hmm, yeah. I, I kind there? of like what um, I like what Iceman's saying here is like, you guys are a bunch of wolves. You guys are a bunch of like uh, creeps. It's a good comment for this time period because these guys do like. Yeah, it, behave poorly as this right. as this scene unfolds. But but here's the thing: and they're on top of it with this word balloon. Yeah, but but the, but I feel like Stan isn't. I feel like it's just. <laughs> I feel like it's just him saying that like he just doesn't have testosterone running through his Cause stuff because it's established that he's younger and stuff. Right. So he's like, Stanley is like he'll get there eventually. Like this is the ideal. This is what you want. But like the boy just doesn't have anything flown well, through there, the sack there, yet. There's like a counter to that because then they're like. Oh well, that's good because now we won't have the competition. So he, they do view him as competition. If he was just like a, a twerp, they wouldn't maybe view him as competition. I love all of these panels with like regular street clothes Absolutely. and the regular like bookshelf. You know, like all this stuff looks like like a like a bookshelf, like a statue. You know, like interior. Yeah, and it looks like like the old school stuff that was like like artisan crafted. Is yes. like this is the shit that I would be staring at when I could stare at it on like you know the whole image mm -hmm. on a giant monitor and just like see what Kirby you know, salts the setting with, man, to just com communicate the scene. Man, I was going for, like, all, like, some yes. colors just so you get that, like, little red to pop. It's it's amazing to me how much, like, these panels resemble your drawing. You know, like, that that's something I don't think of as Kirby-esque, and I'll look at some of this reprint and be like, man, that's like, is this your panel, Ed? And, <laughs> and that um, T-shirt image that, that you showed, like, yeah. at the beginning, at first glance, I was like, oh, Ed made that. That's part of Ed's <laughs> Yeah, design. I actually thought that, too. Um, I like, but I, I really like her costume. It makes me think of Kirby's like romance comics mm -hmm. background and other genres that it's, he's worked in. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful outfit. Yeah, at some point, I think he checks out of that. Mm -hmm. You know, like he's still paying attention maybe to uh, fashion clothes, whatever. Yeah. But you get to the 70s and it's like, what's what's that guy mm -hmm. wearing? I made her stuff green uh, as opposed to like a bluish man because I wanted to, like, you know, the Phoenix bit. But also just like when you watch Mad Men or something, like like the lady with the red hair would wear those green outfits and absolutely. just compliment so perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Now, they're creating an entertainment here. So it's like you got... Like, I love all the shtick, you know, they're all trying to outdo each other and using powers and, and you know, it's really great because then she starts showing off yeah. hers. Like mm -hmm. she just joins right in with the gang and uh, pretty impressive the stuff she's able to do. Right. Reading a book, putting it back on the shelf with her mind. It was so disrespected, like her power. It was so disrespected, like in these early comics, like before Chris Claremont gets hold like she's the most powerful doing things with your mind is more powerful than any of this other stuff but they just saw it as like uh parlor tricks or something also um very beautiful the way she's drawn and i wonder if that's credit to the inker yeah um you know kirby not always associated with drawing beautiful women or delicate features or whatever well i think it's, it's a little different in the i think it's 60s. in the close-ups where the kirby like you know where the criticism would come in in the close because it's like heavy lines and definition it's a space between the eyeballs yeah. like starts to extend real far and that doesn't look ideal on a cartoonist kayfabe is brought to you by the comic books that we make uh out right now man red room trigger warnings issue one two three and potentially issue number four Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Rube Comics. Every issue is completely self-contained, so when you see these comics out in the wild, scoop it up. You're going to get a full experience, and if you dig it, go grab another issue by Jim Rugg. A Hulk Grand Design Monster, Hulk Grand Design Madness. The man takes 300 
issues of Incredible Hulk per issue and crams them into a succinct 40-page story, an incredible romp that encompasses all of the best hits from Incredible Hulk lore. In stores now, scoop up these books. Now that we're done paying the bills, back to the video. Looking for a new way to enjoy your favorite comics and manga? Comixology Unlimited has you covered. With Comixology Unlimited, you get an unlimited access to an unrivaled library of over 40,000 digital comics, manga, and graphic novels featuring content from over 125 publishers and thousands of independent creators from around the world. And if that's not enough, you can also save up to 15% when buying select new and current comics. Try Comixology Unlimited today with a free 30-day trial and then just $5.99 a month afterwards. For details, visit Amazon.com slash Comixology Unlimited. Hey, Hank, Hank Tim. Feels like he's crossing a line here. Good thing she's not helpless. <laughs> Slams him on the ceiling. This comic gets a little weird, man. Like in issue two or three, uh, the love triangle isn't really between the guys and, and, and her. It's Professor X is included. He's like, oh, like I pine for you and I could never say anything. So it's just like, and, and you know, he, these are teenage students. This is great cartooning to me. You see the oafish kind of giant feet, but dropping him on the couch whenever she's done, like teaching him a lesson. Mm -hmm. Very believable with the cushions flailing yeah. around him. It's so funny. That's when, a heavy dude getting, getting dropped. Physics. When we first were kicking it, man, and we were working on that Pornhounds comic, like, and you were doing like one panel a day, you drew this image of some dude sitting on the couch and the cushions went down and the sides went up and the observation of it was so beautiful and great. It, 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 it I wanted to rip up earlier uh, comic drawings I did where people were sitting on couches and forevermore it, that piece like influenced the way that I draw. <laughs> I'm excited to, interact to, to with put porn panels uh, in this video with uh, <laughs> Jack Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> now, again, like just creating a new world, like what a great villain, what a great look for a villain. Great contrast, too, because you go from one of our heroes bald, you know, totally mm -hmm. exposed, to a guy who's almost completely covered in a mm -hmm. metal helmet. It's, it's so much about contrast. I remember te teaching workshops in, uh, in Denmark, and the one uh, French girl was, like, gassed at the idea of, like, red, purple, and magenta, like, being the same, co like, the colors used on a character. She, she was, like, appalled, like... Who would ever do that? Why would that ever be done? Wow. It was for him, Galactus, and like one or two other yeah. characters. Early uh, Cosmic Kirby there, too. Yeah. So we get our, our villain finally. On page 11, we, we intro Magneto, the uh, an evil mutant. And uh, that's halfway through the comic before the, the villain shows up. Mm -hmm. And establish that roster. But Very then, unusual structure. Uh, I mean, but the thing is, the big problem with superhero comics and comics up to this point is just how formulaic and generic and same, same. So... We're changing up the formula. We're, we're taking things at the pace that the story unfolds. We're not following a, a, a prescribed set of... I wonder if skywriting was a new thing uh, <laughs> at, at that era. A lot, lot of it in these early ones, yeah. yeah. And more of the newspaper storytelling, you know? It, it feels like that's in every uh, every Marvel comic of this era. They were at Coney Island or something. St and you know. Stan Lee, man, he, he makes Artie Simek work. I really like this inker. I oh, like the good. difference in your in your water waves. You know, it's like a thicker, like a brush kind of thing making that texture compared to like the smoke and the explosions and stuff. I, I'm, I'm on board for that. This is a great panel, too. Oh, I think yeah. the coloring looks really good there. I mean, we're going to see the ultimate one uh, pretty soon, that Lichtenstein lifts. Yeah, I mean, that this reminded me a little bit of like the Lichtenstein kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But also like that's your Kirby kind of like, let's put somebody in the foreground. So that's already part of his tool set. I think of life a lot whenever uh, you would see like he does a shorthand where it's like a leg in oh, the yeah. foreground. There it is. And so, like some of these comics, these classic comics we've come to like later in life as we fill out our collection. But this is one like I was a little kid reading this the same way like a little kid in like, you know, 1960, whatever would have been reading it. So like this, this thing's in my DNA, this, this comic. Here's the piece, man. Yeah, that's it. That like scene lifts, and I and like I forget the, because like the dialogue is different. Mm -hmm. It's about an image duplicator thing, yeah. and I think it's from a Doom Patrol, but I'm not 100 percent right. sure. So, and if that's the case, then Lichtenstein is a comic nerd <laughs> because it's like X Men and Doom Patrol are pretty similar, you know, 
Yeah, I mean, they're, yeah, they're kind of one of those things like Swamp Thing and Man Thing, where it's like they kind of come out right at the same time, co- cover similar ground. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, story is Magneto taking over this army base, including, like, I guess, intercontinental ballistic <laughs> missiles. Like, pretty yeah, wild stuff Cold here. War stuff. Yeah, totally Cold War stuff. Another big part of the Marvel stuff. Interesting, no line on the, uh, like, separating that wall. But you see the way the soldiers respond, and it's a great display for Magneto of like, you guys don't even slow me down. You have not, you guys, the only way that you can hurt somebody is with metal apparatus. Guess what, motherfuckers? Great panel. Like, all just repelling all the soldiers. Mm -hmm. Nice at this size, too. Oh, yeah. 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 I couldn't wait to see this thing in print, man. This feels like your your fashion, like, got to show off the, let's model the mm-hmm. costume. And, and love that. I love that uh, furniture behind her. And That's a very 60s piece of furniture. When it would come to these girls, man, Kirby would use some reference, man. There's that famous image with Sue Storm and uh, that one um, Playboy illustrator. Well, just seeing that couch in the background, I'm sure there's some photo somewhere of, like, a girl in a bathing suit standing in front of some, like, you know, lawn, lawn furniture. This is the weirdest part. Bobby's got to put on his boots. The only part of his costume that he wears. <laughs> Why would he need the boots? This is awesome. That feels like a kind of an iconic, neat mo- yeah. moment. People felt that shit, man. Oh, yeah. Like, like people really felt like, oh, this poor guy. Yeah, and you see it in his shape here. This stuff to me feels almost like um, this could be the Charlton comic. You know, the the I don't want to say generic, but it just isn't stylized yet the way it's going to end up being stylized and i like that well this like 1960s wave of marvel comics it was something new but it was also you know like a like a reissue or something it's like okay we're bringing back the human torch okay there was a character called the angel yeah. in the in the in the golden age we're bringing him back in this new form you know oh yeah that, that's another example for the you know fantastic four fantastic five mm-hmm. like we, we, human torch is in marvel comics one uh so was angel yeah, it makes sense. And, you know, of course, this is the this is what we've been training for. Like, we've got an evil mutant now. The army's ineffective against him. Let's see what the X-Men can do. And Cyclops in the middle of soldiers. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and um, w- one of Stan Lee's first uh, characters that he created was, the, uh, was um, Jack Frost, who was like an icy human torch. It's funny to reverse engineer. Like, it's so obvious how you come to that mm-hmm. idea. Very easy to connect those dots. And here we go, man. You know, springing into action. Let's let's bring the team in. And again, Cyclops looks good. This is how you make a leader yeah. character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, that's that's uh Joseph Campbell. And just through line showing the like this this primitive form of like you can't get to the more established, I don't know, Art Adams kind of uh energy fights or something. Or or what Kirby grows into yeah. without pacing yourself start you gotta start somewhere do you guys know this inker from other stuff like his name is on yeah, Sil- from- like silver age uh, marvel here and there so impressed with it magneto kind of like feeling the effects of this x-men team struggling struggling to compete against love them. the body language here i think this is evidence that, that like kirby doesn't really do like much underdrawing and stuff like with those eyes just kind of like place them in there somewhere mm-hmm. it's almost like uh like uh how like, Windsor McKay puts the dialogue in after drawing the, the word balloons. Yeah. Like, Kirby draws the mask and then just, like, floats some eyeballs in there somewhere. I love this whole panel mm-hmm. so much. Yeah, love, the comics the, language of the it. The dotted face, yeah. you know, is like he's unloading full blast. But also, like, the lines that are radiating out, at some point, like, they're going the different direction. You know, they're all pointed at the head here. But now down here, they're, like, pointed at what he's hitting. It shouldn't work. Right, like that. I would never do that. Mm-hmm. I, that would always be like, no, that can't. can't I mean, that's that way. part of the magic of these early. It really models. is great. Anytime you get a team shot, especially on like just the sixth of the page, just this small little shot. Missiles coming out. Good perspective is it's now every, we're getting the counter punch. Everything you need, man. Like, there's no backgrounds. It's just characters doing stuff. Like, that's a fucking great panel. And in, in terms of structure, like all that stuff up front where they're testing out their their abilities and showing you what they can do and then you see it you know play out in a real situation i mean that's that's great structure and i like your recoloring on this because i looked at um like scans of this original issue and that's how they're colored yeah bring that in tom yeah pretty close yeah that same idea it's kind of like this rough i always wonder like are the colorists 
drawing or the color separators are they drawing like on the screen because i mean that's a drawn that's that's not a cutout right so are you just drawing on that magenta plate to get that that red laser shape whatever it is i feel like that's a cool uh a cool piece for coloring and they do great you know work together as a team shut down these bombs send one of them that got away out to sea by by marvel girl look at those mystical hands dude mm -hmm. yes like he's gonna conjure some shit and really he good does. And yeah That feels like your credits, uh, the, the credits mm -hmm. page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that. like, that's the move, man. You know, that's something that I pulled from Steranko, dude, from, from that one uh, first page of that Captain America comic, where he's, like, would just have those panels that would have, like, every hue and value of, mm -hmm. like, magenta, blue, green. So it's, like, use every... Per so it's, like, you have 100% magenta, 100% yellow, red, and then play with the different values, man. Do a 25% mm -hmm. cyan... Do 100% cyan with like 50%, 100% magenta with like 50% yes. cyan, like all that kind of stuff. You know, that this is a different, there's four or five different reds in there, and then you leave one white right at the head. Yeah, it looks really good. So does all this stuff, though. I mean, that's fantastic. Love the shading on, it's, on him. It's a Mignola drawing. It is. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Hmm. Really good lighting effect. And, of course, the X-Men aren't defeated. I just love it, dude. Like, dig into the ground. Like, mm -hmm. showing them dig out. Like, yeah. like being... Like, if you read this in a script and had to draw it, it would be so tough for you. But, like, if you can just play on the page, Marvel, and then just come up with this stuff on a whimsy, like, you, I, I really do feel like you get so much more out of it. It's so, certainly more visual. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, especially for, like, stories that center around combat. Yeah. You know? And Magneto leaves like this ma magnetic wall or force field or something so he can make his escape. And whenever it's gone, so is he. I, this is another, just this simple illustration, you know, this distant shot of Angel. This is, Kirby knows anatomy mm -hmm. really, really yeah, well, beautiful. man. And that is a great drawing. Yeah, people that suggest, uh, you know, he draws wonky anatomy. I swear it's, it's, it's sound. It really is. It you is. You know, like there's stylization applied to it, but go back and look at like old sports footage. You'd be surprised what a baseball player looks like in 1940s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, I, I mean, he's proven himself like with the, the early days, but then when it, when he starts getting that, uh, it would be a good example. I mean, a good exercise, like draw five pages a day for a year yeah. and see what your artwork looks like at the end of mm -hmm. the year. You know, like it's, it's, you're going to codify things. You're going to find some shorthand, shorthand, and you're going to grow a lot probably if you keep some Kirby type tenacity along the way, man. Like, it, like it's, it's something to try. That's such a good panel. This whole nine panel sequence makes me think about how much ground these guys would cover in their pages. Yeah. You know, because like if I do nine panels, it's probably a couple of close ups. It's uh -huh. all sort of like a moment. Yeah. <laughs> They're covering a lot of ground, yeah. different characters, different time jumps between panels. The story moves, man. It does. Well, and whenever they get around to making that like blown up chip kid version of this comic, you'll see like how much is there when it's like right in your face. Yeah. You think of these as like a single page illustration. Many of them are going to shine. Mm hmm. I, I like I like the way the story ends. A, a lot of these early Marvels end with like a plane, you know, it's kind of like the jet age or whatever, plane taking off. And I like what you did with the colors here. It kind of feels like a good, you know, a good way to end. It gets like kind of airy. And even, even the colors of like the military uniforms are kind of like a, you know, an airy, light, you know, light-handed color. It's kind of a nice way to end it. You know, another thing with the way, like, Kirby would, the, the Marvel method is there's also an art to the negative space that you allow in in each panel. Now, <laughs> guys like McFarlane and, and Liefeld, and the, like, they would talk about, like, you know what, congest your panels up a little bit because the writer's going to find places to put dialogue all over the place and obliterate the artwork, yada, yada. <laughs> what do you see? Can I show you an amazing example of that? <laughs> 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 no. I would be so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Still figuring that stuff out, man. Like, yeah, too much in that panel. <laughs> <laughs> but and maybe he and maybe he saw that stuff getting lettered. So then when he's getting here, it's like, yeah, I better leave some space. It's so incredible to see that panel and think how you assume that would never happen today. Like mm -hmm. that would be one that 
you got to fix that. The editor tell the artist or the writer, whoever, to fix it. Back then, it's like, got to get it to the press. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fix it in the next panel or the next page or the next issue. Yeah. Really fun to dig into these That's things. That's awesome. Yeah. We've done a bunch of issue ones, uh, and it... it it doesn't make sense that it took us three years to do X-Men issue number one. No, it doesn't. But hey, better late than never. You can't cover all the comics in the first episode. That's goddamn right, man. You guys good to go? Yeah. yeah. K-Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, Jimmy? Hulk Grand Design Monster and Hulk Grand Design Madness, the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk, retooled by me, writing, drawing, coloring, lettering, doing all that good stuff, the Grand Design tradition. You can get that wherever comics are sold while supplies last. And join me on patreon.com slash jimrug to see more of my comics and how I make them. Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue one, two, and three are on the sands as we speak. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. Banned in 28 countries. Banned in 10 comic shops. But you can get your hands on these comics. Order and pre-order them uh, at my link tree in the description below this video. Go to my Patreon. More than 200 pages are up there as we speak. Three bucks get you the archive. I put up new strips every Tuesday. Tommy, what do you have? Check out Fantastic Four Grand Design, Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, uh, American Barbarian. Uh, go to my Patreon and uh, check out my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. Jimmy, what else do we have out there, man? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. That's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.